This is Scotty and Andrew, and you're listening to Fun with Horror. Hello to our amazing horror family, fans, friends. This is, of course, Fun with Horror, the weekly horror. There we go. Movie review podcast in which Scotty and I, we take turns giving each other movies to watch, and then we discuss them the following week. We only have two rules, and the first is whoever picks the next movie has to pick one that they have never seen before, and the second rule is that we both have to watch it. Last pick was me, and I chose the 2021 movie, Antlers, which is directed by Scott Cooper and stars Carrie Russell, Jesse Plemons, and Jeremy T. Thomas. Um, And then again, please be sure to stick around to the very end of the podcast where we are going to hear Scotty's pick for next week's movie. Oh boy, are we. Oh, I'm excited. As you know, I love that (laughs) moment, my friend. (laughs) How are you, bud? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm good. I'm good. good. I'm great. I'm great. Well, that's happy. Happy week. Happy week. Happy week to you, too, my (laughs) friend. (laughs) Except as I told you, it's... What is the temperature there up in Washington State? It is... It's actually a little bit chillier today. I want to (sighs) say 60s. I I just hate it. (laughs) Sorry. It's it's like 95 degrees in L.A. today. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. And so behind cool. the scenes, behind the scenes with fun with horror, yes. everybody. Uh, yeah. Uh, I have to turn my air conditioner off. Yeah, sorry. Or else we get a background hum. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm, I've am i got a fan going, and I hope it'll be enough. Yeah, well, I'm hoping, well, at some point I think we should try it, because Clean Feed, or excuse me, Buzzsprout, which is the who we use, it's supposed to wipe that out, I think. So hopefully. I don't think they do. Yeah. Because remember, like I could hear like your garage door opening one day. One oh time. yeah, that's true. So I'm just gonna deal with you know I'm just gonna sweat. <laughs> it's it's Sorry. like a s- sauna in my apartment, <laughs> and uh, you know it's perfect, perfect atmosphere to talk about a horror movie set in cold Oregon. Oh man, well it's perfect for <laughs> me because I'm right there. And actually, you know what's crazy? It was. Tell me. It's been really pretty nice weather here in the 60s or whatever, but yesterday it we got freezing rain, so I had to go out and scrape my windows at 6 in the morning. Good Lord. I know. It's so weird, dude. <laughs> Good Lord. Is I that know. after you watched a movie? Because you like, watch a movie at like 4 in the morning. <laughs> <Are you? laughs> That's amazing. Like by 6 o'clock in the morning, you have watched an entire movie sometimes. Th- that's, that is true. Yes, uh, th- it did not happen that day, but yes, that is that is definitely something that has happened. That is crazy. I love it. <laughs> well, yeah. Have you seen any nice. other movies besides Antlers? Besides Antlers, n- not this week. No, it's been a it's been busy. I haven't I haven't had as much time. Um, what about you? Do you watch anything? I mean, yeah, but nothing nothing horror related. I guess. Gotcha. Like, I watched Dune Part 1 again. Nice. And it's amazing. And then last night we watched West Side Story. Oh, right And, and uh, you know, I, I, I cried. I cried Aww. a little bit. I love it, dude. It made me emotional. It was good. Nice. That's awesome. I actually... I'm I, gonna, you know, I'm going to talk about West Side Story. Let's you know do what it. made me emotional? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> so, you may or may not know... They got Rita Moreno to play a part oh, nice. in the movie, I, and it's a made up. It's a made up role. Oh, okay, it wasn't in the original stage play or the original movie, but some people may know that Rita Moreno was in the original uh, musical back in the '60s, nice, and yeah. she played one of the two lead female characters, uh, Anita. And in that one, I think it's Maria and Tony sing. That beautiful song, Somewhere. Nice. Yep. You know, somewhere we'll find a new place of living. That one. Nice. And in this one, they have Rita Moreno sing it. And it's just Aww. like I I just got a little emotional thinking like, oh, man, like they got her back and they totally just let her sing the song. And I was just like, man, that's that's fantastic. That's awesome. 
That's really so. cool. Yeah, I like the movie. Nice. I have to watch. I still haven't seen that, and I haven't seen. I actually haven't seen Dune. Well, if you haven't seen <laughs> West Side Story by next April, mm-hmm. maybe we could just do musicals every April Fool's Day. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what do you mean April Fool's Day? April Fool's Day. We did a Serbian film. What are you talking about? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I got, buddy. <laughs> Me too. You want to, should we talk about uh, Yeah, Antlers? let's talk about the movie. And also watch Dune. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what is storytelling? Storytelling started with our indigenous people. Can anyone give me an example of a myth or a story they're afraid of? Okay, so Andrew. Yes. Now that we've talked about the wonders of West Side Story, <laughs> let's talk about the movie that you chose. Oh, yeah. That movie is called Antlers. It came out last year, and as you said, it's directed by Scott Cooper, mm-hmm. um, who also directed the movie uh, Hostiles and Crazy Heart. Right. And I told you last week that I really enjoyed Hostiles. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's produced by Guillermo del Toro, <laughs> right? which I had completely forgotten. Me too, until today, actually, when I was getting stuff ready, <laughs> I went, oh, what? Yeah, totally forgot about that. So before we move on, let's, uh, everybody out there, if you have not seen Antlers, uh, we are about to spoil it. So this is your final warning to uh, to if you don't want it spoiled, go watch it on HBO Max or wherever it's available. And uh, yeah, so Andrew, yeah, Andrew, yeah, it's me. You're about to have three minutes on the timer oh, to recap okay. this movie for us. Oh, okay. And are you ready? At three minutes, I'm going to stop you, and I hope you have your stopwatch ready too. So I have it ready. At. Yeah. Wonderful. Yes. All right. On the count of three. <laughs> three, two, one, recap. All right. So the movie begins in an old uh, abandoned mine, and there's two gentlemen in there that are making meth. Um, we find out through as they're making meth, one of the guys goes outside to his pickup, and there he is his young son. Um, I don't know, probably eight years old. No, probably less than that, five years old, something like that. Anyway, he says, you know, stay in the car. I'm almost done. He goes back in. They start making their meth again. They hear these weird noises in this mine. They eventually get kind of destroyed by something in there. As as we hear all these noises, we see the little boy that was in the pickup go to the mine entrance and walk in. Cut to antlers. We see the kind of opening shot. Um, at the very beginning after this, we see uh, Carrie Russell is playing a woman named Julia Meadows. She's a teacher at the local school, and she has moved in with her brother, who is played by Jesse Plemons, and the brother's name is Paul, and he is the local uh, police, he's a local police officer. Um, throughout the movie, we find out both of them were heavily, heavily abused by their father, who is now dead, and that is one of the reasons Julia has moved moved back, is that the father's not there, and she wants to be with her brother, Paul, because she loves him dearly. Um, In her classroom, though, we see this young man by the name of Lucas, uh, who's drawing these very dark pictures, and at one point she says, "Tell tell the story that was your homework assignment, go ahead and start. He tells a story about these three characters, Papa, brother, and young brother, something like that, and how Papa has become really different and angry and scary. Well, it turns out that Lucas is actually the son of one of the people making meth at the beginning, and the young boy that went in is his little brother. Throughout the movie, we find out that those two survived whatever attacked them in the mines. They got home, and they were acting very odd. Uh, Lucas is now taking care of them as they are starting to transform as they're becoming monster-like. The dad is quite crazy at this point. Um, at one point, the principal from the school goes to do a welfare check on Lucas. She gets <laughs> eaten by the dad, who is locked up in the attic, by the way, by Lucas. Um, he, he takes a bite of her, and all of a sudden, something rips out of his body. Uh, we then see that 
<laughs> throughout the movie. We see this creature is now mauling a few people. Uh, anyway, at the end, towards the end, because I'm running low on time, um, Julia basically adopts Lucas. Uh, the big monster attacks a bunch more people. Carrie, or excuse me, Julia kills the monster. It turns out um, that the little brother is about to turn into a monster as well. Julia kills him, the little brother. And then at the end, we find out that Paul, Julia's brother, is going to be this next creature. Done. <laughs> Just stopped it with five seconds. That was so hard, dude. Oh, wow. <laughs> My gosh. Yeah. I left yeah. out a whole lot in that movie, but. Well, yeah, you know, you know, I and I, I knew, I knew you were gonna come up short because you just, you, you were like thirty seconds <laughs> of your three minutes was like all about the intro to the movie because it was quite the intro, man. I know, but I know, yeah, yep. we're, we're gonna have to get good at that because I did the same thing last week. Yeah, I that's know tough. your pain. But okay, so now that you've recapped the movie in such exquisite detail. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what did you think, my friend? First of all, did you watch this alone? Uh, yes, I did. Okay. Yep. What did you think of Antlers? My initial thought of Antlers, is, and still thought, is it was fine. Um, I thought it was, there was some really cool visuals. There was some uh, really great acting, especially, and I'll highlight him more later, but the character of Lucas Weaver, played by Jeremy T. Thomas. I thought he was fantastic, this young actor. I hope we see more of him. Um, but the movie, all in all, I would say was okay. That's about it. Okay. I think it was okay. All right. What about you? What did you think of Antlers? Uh, we're going to we're gonna have another, uh, one of our few disagreements here. <gasps> okay. I loved Antlers. Whoa, okay. Loved it. Uh, I have issues with it. Mm -hmm. I have some, well, some, not really issues, but more thoughts right. about it. But, um, you know, I watched it last weekend uh, by myself mm -hmm. with the lights out. And, I, you know, I'm going to try and watch every one of our movies like that from now on. <laughs> because yeah. I, I would, yeah. I mean, this movie got me. Nice. I, it. You know, I was fine afterwards and everything. I wasn't like, I wasn't awake all night, but right. I yeah. While I was watching this, I was freaking scared. Nice, dude. I love so, that. Yeah, I love that. So, well, let's go into more detail with you. Why? Okay. You, why did you just think it was just okay? So for me, the biggest thing, um, even though there's some bigger moments in this movie, obviously with. <laughs> With qu quite a bit of violence, to be honest, in those moments, um, I thought it was pretty slow. And you thought it was slow. I did. I thought it was. I oh, just interesting. Yeah, I was kind of waiting for it to pick up. I guess I don't know, but I just yeah, I thought it was kind of slow. It dragged a l for again. This is all subjective, of course, but for me, I just yeah. kind of it kind of just dragged a little bit, and so. That's um, very subjective because uh, when I had it on today, I was making note of how how good the pacing was. Whoa! Right on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. See, I love it, man. I, I like mean, you that. start you start within a couple of minutes. You have this kid walking, and he hears the Wendigo howl. Right. Or the Wendigo. <laughs> Wendigo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Wendigo howl, like he hears the noise, and right there, you're in the movie. For right. me, at least, and then you have this amazing intro with the with his dad and his dad's friend cooking meth in the in the mines mm -hmm. and getting attacked, and then the kid going in, and then after that, you're introduced to uh, you know, yeah, like you said, Julia and mm -hmm. Paul, her brother, right? And I mean, yeah, I just <laughs> I loved every yeah, I loved the whole thing. Um, Fair enough, dude. I'll I'll tell you what my biggest issue with it was, or my biggest thought. Really, Please. it's not again. It's not an issue. Right, right, right. Um, I didn't really understand, and even paying close attention the second time, I honestly don't think the movie did a great job of laying down the rules of the Wendigo. Yes. Yep. Yep. Um, because I had the question: What happened to the first Wendigo that killed? <laughs> uh the friend and uh like kind of hurt Lucas uh Lucas's dad. I have that same question. Yep. <laughs> Where'd he go? Um or it. 
Yeah, where did that one go? Yep. Where did the Wendigo go? <laughs> 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 A storybook <laughs> by Scotty and Andrew. Um, and that yeah. So I mean, let's let's talk about that if you don't mind. No, of course not. Because yeah, that Wendigo attacks the two adults, and right. the kid goes in. The next, uh, through flashbacks and the course of the movie, the dad locks himself in a room because he feels himself getting sick. Right, exactly. Uh, And then eventually the little kid starts to uh, have black tears and he's starting to look sickly too, so they put him in there. Yep. So he's, he's, he's getting the Wendigo fever too. Eventually they are let out, and we'll talk about that later. Mm hmm. Um, and then at one point they, the, the Wendigo, the, the dad is now a full, full blown Wendigo. Right. Yeah. And the dad, uh, he, he attacks, uh, Paul, Jesse Plemons. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Jesse Plemons gets an antler through the arm. So at this point I'm thinking that you have to get injured like it's right. like a contact thing a blood thing or something like it's like a disease yep that's what i got I, that's what i took away from it too but then um but then they don't show that uh lucas's brother uh aiden is his name mm-hmm. they don't show lucas's little brother aiden getting hurt true um so i listened today mm-hmm and they gave an explanation, but I'm still not sure it makes like there's still things that weren't really explained. Okay. Because they talked to Graham Greene, right? Who was yep. wonderful as always. Yeah, he's always great. And he gives the the way you can kill it. Right. You can kill it, and it's okay. So it the Wendigo is always hungry, right. and the more it eats, the hungrier it gets, the weaker it gets. Yep. You can kill it in its weakened state by destroying its heart. Right. Um, which, but that sends it searching for a new host, right? Right, exactly. Yep. So I guess we can infer that Lucas and Aiden's dad maybe killed the other Wendigo. Yeah. And the spirit yeah. of that Wendigo went into him. But then, and then, of course, when he is killed by Julia. His spirit goes directly into the little boy, into Aiden, and then when Aiden is killed, Paul is out in the truck, and the spirit goes into him because maybe he's been touched by the Wendigo. Mm-hmm. But you have to kind of Im- kind of assume that things and uh, that stuff, that right? Things. Yeah, <laughs> I know they. Yeah, they really don't lay it all out for you in this one. It's more. Yeah, here's here's some puzzle pieces. You put it together. And I don't mind puzzle pieces, you know this. Yes, but no, yeah. In a movie like this, I feel like there's there need to be some kind of rules, mm-hmm. so you know what's at stake. Yeah, agreed, absolutely. So that was that was really my main issue with the movie. Mm-hmm. Fair. Did you did you think about that at all? Um, a little bit at one point, like when she. Because I had missed the first time some of the details that he was talking about, Graham was talking about, and mm-hmm. so like when she in the f- you know kind of final battle when she just starts beating it up, I was like, what? <laughs> that seems this this is like a giant monster, and I don't know. I just felt like, wow, you're really doing some damage on this thing that's you know five times bigger than you. But yeah, it yeah. had just eaten, so that that made more sense. So I did it think about weak. it a yeah. little bit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, so that battle, I didn't know what to think about it the first time I saw it. Uh-huh. But then th- when I watched it again the second time, it made more sense to me. Because first of all, yes, like you said, it's eaten, it's weaker. Right. Um, And then she's got the flair, so it doesn't right. like light. Even though that's not explicitly said in the movie. Right. You can kind of, you can kind of tell uh, that's, that's an easy assumption because of, you know, the dad and the kid being locked in a dark attic Mm -hmm. or up a loft or whatever that was yeah um you can assume that they don't like light too much right so yeah so she blinds kind of blinds it a little bit with the flare Mm -hmm. and she just yeah she just gets the upper hand on it you know yeah 
No, nope, exactly. Um, and I like, I do like that it doesn't like light, and I like that the setting is Oregon, where it's pretty dark there, even mm-hmm. when it's it's daytime. I thought that was kind of a smart thing to do. Um, I appreciated that. Just a little side note. Speaking of light. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I that's that's a major note of mine. Nice. Oregon. Yeah. That setting, I was in love with it. <laughs> Dude, come visit us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just thought. For this type of movie yeah. and for the, I guess, the slow pacing that you're talking about mm-hmm. that I actually enjoyed, um, I really did. I loved all the shots of the town. I loved the wet, damp atmosphere of mm-hmm. everything. Yep. I loved the way um, Florian Hoffmeister, who was <laughs> the DP, I loved the way he shot everything. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, I loved the setting beyond belief. I I agree. I actually have that on one of my my liked column. Um, okay, was that the Good. setting was beautiful and it, again I I've been to Oregon a number of times so seeing it I'm like yeah dude I love <laughs> this place so um, yeah it's and I I even put the town itself having almost like a post apocalyptic look to it while still being a s- not thriving town but a town that's you know still has people um, yeah but I just thought that Which was. It- Kind of, yeah. <laughs> it's supposed to kind of feel like that. Right. Because the whole, the whole idea of the Wendigo is that uh, the Wendigo appears. It's like a god. It's mm-hmm. kind of like a spirit, uh, a Native American spirit. And it, it comes around. And when, when humans have desecrated the earth too mm-hmm. much. Right. And yes. it's kind of punishment. And uh, I actually even wrote down there's a little intro... Uh, I guess you'd say a little stanza or a poem that I wrote down, and it says, Mother Earth has been pillaged, stripped of her life's blood, a violation that has awakened the malevolent spirit, seeking the lost, the frail, and the depraved. Pray it desires not you. Yeah. (laughs) So I like that. But then there's another issue I have with, and it's, and again, it's the rules of the Wendigo. It's supposed to be there. There's not, hmm, how do I say this? There wasn't enough shown of humans uh, desecration of mother earth. Fair. Yep. To, to really highlight that aspect of Wendigo. Yeah. I would agree with you on that. Yeah. You know, like, I know it's just something you kind of assume with the way things are today, mm-hmm. but who knows? Like, it, yeah. No, I get that. I get that. It could have been a yeah easy way to show it on there. Yeah, and to to give a hint as to why this Wendigo has appeared and why right. it's it's going around. Um. So. No, I I, yeah, I, I and, agree. But getting back to the atmosphere of the town and what you're talking about, mm-hmm. <clears throat> it was interesting to me the first time we see Julia in the class and Lucas is in there and these other kids, mm-hmm. including that crappy little bully <laughs> kid. Right. <Ugh. laughs> um, she asks, there's a little girl in front, like a little Hermione that wants <laughs> to answer the question. Yes. But she's asking different students to give her an example of a what was a fable or a fairy tale both yeah 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 She's oh a myth a myth yeah a mythical tale and all these kids including lucas just shake their heads in a way that's like i'm not talking about that that's true which gave me this feeling that the town there was like a shadow over this town like they knew something was present in this town but nobody just talk, nobody talked about it that's interesting i didn't even think of that i just <laughs> That's good. I really like that. Yeah, that it's just there. It's looming over them. Well, I liked bad. it, but it, again, it's another thing that just really wasn't explored too much after that. After right. that, it's just Lucas dealing with his brother and father, which right. was oh, yeah. just amazing. It was great, but it was just disturbing. Absolutely. And fantastic. So well done. Yep. Yep. I have some notes on that for sure. <laughs> Tell me those notes. Well, I just... I liked that atmosphere of it. I liked that style of everything that was happening. I thought it was horrifying. Um, mm-hmm. But there was that one moment where we kind of get the flashback of of right after 
um, they came back from their, their the meth lab in the in the caves or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I love that we kind of see that deterioration. We see Lucas not knowing what to do. But that moment where he grabs, where we see, you know, Aiden is now also sick. And the dad pulls him in and closes the door. And you just see Lucas scream. It was yeah, so... Yeah. That was a great just scene. Scream and, like, pain and frustration. Exactly. Exactly. But I loved that scene. I, I didn't... Not because of what it was. I just thought it was such a powerful scene. And I thought, like I said, that was the scene where I just went, whoa, this kid is good. He's a yeah. good little actor, man. No, there's there's not really any joy whatsoever no, in this movie. There's really not. But that's Oof. okay. Like I'm okay with that. Uh mm-hmm. I I actually appreciate that aspect of the movie. Some movies I yeah, I would definitely mark that against a movie sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like there's no like I didn't smile one time at a joke. Right. But in this one it was all oppressive everything. Yeah. But I see that's to me it added to the terror, the horror of the movie because you weren't just dealing with the Wendigo. You're also dealing with, as you said in your recap, Julia and Paul. Mm-hmm. Uh, she has been away from the town for 20 years because her dad abused her. Correct. And it sounds like her dad abused Paul some too. Yep. Yep. But exactly. we never know how much. We only get a hint of how much the dad abused Julia. Right. And quick aside, Mm -hmm. I did appreciate that they didn't show any of the actual abuse. Agreed. I thought the exact, I have that same note. I was very thankful they didn't show it. We we can use our that note today. What's that? Yeah. uh, No, I made that note today. Yeah. And it was, it was a really great, like it just shows that you don't have to show the abuse of somebody to, have us feel anger and sadness at that abuse that happened. Right. Exactly. Um, And then you have the relationship between Lucas and his father. Like, so, you know, they've lost their mother. Their mother is deceased. Right. Which we see on a, some kind of, uh, the school forms. Right. And... The doctor, uh, the one doctor at one point says that Lucas has been abused. Yes, that's right. Which you believe because the father is a meth addict. Right. But you don't ever see abuse. Right. Not at all. Not with him. Mm-mm. Even when the father is becoming a monster, a literal monster, <laughs> yeah. there's love in that family. And it almost makes you wonder if there really was abuse and how much, I guess there was because you see the scratches on Lucas's back. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's that, it's that horrible thing, you know, no matter what, it's his father and he loves his father. He loves his brother even more. Right. Well, yeah. And even when he's changing, I mean, he pushes Lucas out of the way and, I mean, he's the one that puts the locks on the door to keep him from hurting them, you know? So, yeah, there is love there. But, again, there's also that side that we didn't see. Yeah, there's some kind of abuse happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, And what you're talking about, the whole... The whole thing happening with Lucas and the dad, the other other moment that really stuck with me Mm -hmm. is because... From the first moment that we saw what was going on in the house, mm-hmm. I just felt such pain for Lucas. Yeah. The fact that he's alone in this house and he's got to hear these noises coming from this room. Right. Oh, my gosh. That was terrifying to me. Yep. And the part that he chooses to block out is his little brother yeah. asking for help. Oh, I'm hungry. I'm yeah. Hungry. And then he puts those big headphones on so he can't hear. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. It's like you said there's really no no happy moments in this movie. Mm-hmm. I mean it that mm-hmm. that's kind of the movie in a nutshell. You know, uh genre-wise, not genre, but just the way it makes you feel, I guess, is kind of that the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, it's just it's 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 a heavy ass movie. Yeah. Yes it is. So, you know, I I can understand if somebody doesn't care for the movie because of that, mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Because they yeah. didn't feel any joy watching it because it was all oppressive and you know, I can understand that. Yeah. Yep. I get that. Was there anything else that you didn't or I guess you didn't really necessarily didn't like it, but was there anything you really like disliked or Mm-mm. no? Mm-mm. I love the oppressive nature of the movie. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it kind of reminded me of Seven, except there wasn't like a Gwyneth Paltrow character to right. lighten up the movie a little bit. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there was there was no one happy in this one. <laughs> do I do have yeah. I have one question that I put on my I just put it on my I don't know how he knew. But Lucas at one point on that door puts one of those bags or sacks, I guess, that's supposed to kind mm. of kind of keep the windigos away or you know, stop them, I guess. I'm wondering, how did he know about that? Because, I mean, he has one of those, and he puts it on the door. Where would he have learned it's that? It's another assumption. Okay. Um, you know, the dad saw those in the mine, so I assume that the dad either told Lucas to put it there or had grabbed one from the mine. Okay. Because, again, we really don't know what happened with the dad and the Wendigo in the mine. Right. That's true. You're right. And going by what Stokes or Graham Greene... Going by what he says, we kind of assume that the dad killed the other Wendigo. Like, there was some kind of battle in the mine. Right. But, yeah, there were all those medicine bags hanging in that mine. So right. The other yeah. thing is that the boy is drawing all these pictures, so it's also possible right. that he's done research about the Wendigo. That's true. That is a good point. That I, Stokes, I like that. Yeah, Stokes makes a comment, like, is this when, when he sees the picture— he asks if the family is Native American. And right. And she says, Julia says no, and he says, how can that be? Right. So, yeah, that's that's interesting, too. <laughs> Although I, I will say, um, at, like, I don't know, pretty early on, after I they mentioned something about, I can't remember exactly how it's worded, but something about Native American lore, um, mm -hmm. Seeing where it was, and then knowing that the movie was Antlers, I was like, <laughs> pretty quick in, I was like, I bet this is a Wendigo. <laughs> sure enough. So. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I think I had heard, I think I had heard somebody, you know, the the name Wendigo mentioned with the movie. Oh, funny. So okay. I knew the movie had to do with a Wendigo. Nice. Okay. But that's about it. I didn't know anything else. Yeah, I didn't know it until until they kind of mentioned a couple of things, and I was like, oh, this is gonna be a Wendigo movie. I was right. <laughs> so, yeah, what else? What else you got? Well, I I mean, honestly, those are those are kind of my quote unquote negatives. Um, yeah, really but we've been talking about that. positives too. That's true. Or at That's least true. I have. No, <laughs> no, I because really. I love the movie. I know. No, I have. <laughs> I have more positives. Don't you? Don't you worry. Um, I yeah, did. Tell me some. I love the scene where Lucas is telling the story from his book. Mm -hmm. I thought that was mm -hmm. really great. Um, <laughs> dark, again, but I loved how there's no words on his notebook. It's all just drawings, yeah. but he just, like, recites it like he has this thing down pat. I just thought it was kind of a horrifying story, a horrifying scene, and I just I love the mood it put you in because it really is a freaky moment. Um, yeah, and I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll tell you, like, even though there's no joy in the movie, I had a little ironic laugh at, um, Julia telling him that was a very good story. <laughs> like, just at that moment, like, uh, whoa, that was not an ending. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then she just says, she says, that was a good story, Lucas. And I know she's just <laughs> trying to end it, and, but they had each other. Right. Well, and that was, so that's the next part is I actually really like the scene where she goes and has ice cream with him. He's sitting mm -hmm. there looking at the ice cream and she takes him in. And I just, I thought that was a nice scene. That was kind of our happiest moment of the whole movie. But, again, they've both experienced trauma. And so they do have that where they can kind of connect because of that trauma. But I loved I loved his line at the end where <laughs> she's obviously mm. been following him. Where he gets up and says, I'm going home. Don't follow me this time. <laughs> and then just yeah, leaves. And I was yeah. like, oh, my gosh. It's just, it was a really, that was a great scene. Really great. I agree. Yeah. yeah. I liked it, um, and I, I suppose that could be one of the few moments of <laughs> somewhat joy in the movie, <laughs> right. like or a lighter moment. They're having ice cream together. Mm-hmm. Yay. 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 Yep. 
I think the movie takes its turn when Principal Booth, played by Amy Madigan, yeah. goes to the house. I mean, that's when everything kind of changes. Oh, for sure, When yeah. she is uh, brutally, brutally killed by the father. Yeah. Oof, duh. And then, and then you see like the a shot that I've seen a few times now since I watched the movie of the father like <laughs> becoming the Wendigo as the antlers start to come out of his mouth. Right. Which is ooh, yeah. Oh my god. And that's that's just something you got to leave to your imagination because yes, you can sit there and think, well, how did that monster come out of that man's body? Right. Like that's a huge monster, and it comes out of that skinny ass man's body <laughs> right. and but you know it's just you got to leave it to your imagination a little yeah, bit we'll make it work one thing i loved is they they veered away from a horror trope which i appreciated in this one where mm. uh julia goes to kind of sort of almost do that welfare check on lucas and gets to the house the door creaks open a little and she just hears some sounds inside and walks away and i was like yeah. yes no one would go in no one. Well, so. except for the principal. Well, except no, the she principal. didn't hear anything. Right. And then she's, right. She's concerned with the children. Exactly. And she was there for, for a welfare check, which is which happens, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, but yeah, I just I love that she didn't go in. I appreciated that veering away from that trope. I I, I like that. I did too. Um I also I I thought it was interesting the scene where Principal Booth is getting killed mm -hmm. and at the same time Lucas is at school watching a class film oh, and he's yeah. playing with the carved Wendigo head and see that's that's where I wonder about the rules of the Wendigo right because part of me was like does he want to become a Wendigo does a small part of him want to become one too yeah so that he can be with his brother and father right hmm. that's because good. because otherwise he's just it's just depressing for him you know? right yeah and he yeah the skull he uses to cut himself essentially like a bite so that's interesting which yeah and, and it never it never comes back right it's nothing that julia notices or anything like that which i thought at first was weird but then i thought then what is the purpose of showing us this and i think in my mind, that's my theory, that part of him wants to become a Wendigo. I like that. I actually, I really like that theory. I agree with you. I think that is exactly why. <laughs> I like that. Well, I mean, yeah, like you said, I mean, he's so alone. He has no, he literally has no one. So yeah. to be part of that family, you know, again, or have people that he can be near. Hmm, that's good. Hmm. Good job, Scotty. I like that. Hey, hey, you know. <laughs> I'm telling you, Titan, it made me think about movies differently. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, I kind of hated that I was so satisfied by the death of the little kid bully. <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> it's like, oh, he's a he's just a little kid, but man, he was a little crapper. Yeah, I was. He was a bully. He was a bully. He was. That's yeah, what bullies get. Snot. They get killed by Wendigos. I did like that scene though, where they just oh, you just it hear it. Terrifying. <laughs> oh my it was gosh. So, well, you do kind of see it real right. quick, too. Yeah. You see no, it jump yeah. on the kid. Right. And start to chomp down. Jeez. I know. Oh, my gosh. And I love, too, that shot of just, you just see Lucas run, and the camera follows him, and then the background just, <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, my gosh. That was All a good right. scene. So, so Lucas, they come to his house. Mm -hmm. he, goes, he goes to his house, and when he gets there, the police are there, and blah, 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 and he goes to the hospital. Right. And... We have the scene with Julia and Paul deciding what to do with Lucas. And eventually, it's decided that Lucas goes to their house. Right. Which brings me to the scene I've wanted to tell you about. <laughs> the The scene I've been most excited to talk to you about. Ooh, yeah. So, uh, Officer LaCroix, played by Rory Cochran, who I love. Oh, nice. Uh, I've loved yeah. him ever since Dazed and Confused. <laughs> nice. So he plays the officer. He's there watching the house. Right. And he hears stuff. <laughs> so he goes to the shed to check, and he sees Aiden in a little box. Right. And Aiden's head pokes up. And I forget, uh, see, I can't even remember right now, LaCroix asks something, and 
Do you remember? Um, I know. <clears throat> I thought he says something on his oh, radio. Oh no! Doesn't yeah, he, he does. He yeah. says, "says the boy is here." Yeah. Yep. That scene <laughs> was crafted so perfectly. Yeah. Because after he says that, you do not see the Wendigo, but all of a sudden, the Wendigo just takes him from behind. Yeah. <laughs> Slams into him from behind, and I was sitting on my couch. <laughs> I had Bowie, Aww. sweet little Bowie, on my lap, Aww, and I, you know, as I do, I she just she's just sleeping, and I had, you know, she had her head on one of my arms, mm-hmm. and I had my other hand on her back, and you know, just keeping her calm and and comfortable, and <laughs> I jumped so hard <laughs> at that moment. I I can <laughs> probably say that I haven't jumped at any of our movies like I jumped in that moment. Nice. And I jumped so hard that I scared the crap out of Bowie. <laughs> she jumps up like with her eyes wide, with her ears back, like, what the hell? What the hell's going on? <laughs> I'm like holding her, instinctually holding her like, it's okay. And then she jumps off the couch <laughs> and is on the floor, and I pause the movie. <laughs> and she's just sitting there on the floor like, what's going on? What? Like this look on her face. What's <laughs> happening? Like she doesn't know what to do. Aww. And I had to like go finally to like pick her up and hold her and like it's okay, I'm so sorry. Oh baby. It was hilarious. Oh my gosh. And I was I was like, well, good <laughs> job, Antlers. Because <laughs> it was a jump scare that was incredibly earned, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a cheap jump scare. It was a good jump scare. Yeah. It was so good, Andrew. <laughs> That watching the movie in pieces the second time on my iPad, Mm -hmm. I got to that scene. I knew what was coming. (laughs) I jumped again (laughs) at at work, you know? (laughs) I'm sitting here watching it on my iPad, not even in the atmosphere. And I was just like, you got me again. I don't know. And it's, it's it's the fact that he gets on his radio and he says, the, I, the kid is here, right? And you're you're waiting for him to say something else. It feels like you're gonna hear him say something else. <laughs> and like, like I can't even remember if you hear uh, Paul ask him where the dad is or anything like that. I can't and just remember. and then it just happens. Yeah, I jumped again, man. And I was like, <laughs> this is the, one of the best scenes in any of the movies we've done. That's awesome, dude. I love that. And then it's terrifying because Paul gets to the house and he goes out to the shed and he's doing the exact same thing that right. LaCroix did. He's at the door exactly the same. And guess what? <laughs> the Wendigo gets him too, but yeah. it doesn't kill him. It just, But it comes up behind him when he's distracted by looking at LaCroix and Aiden. Yep. Which I Man, did. Fantastic. I did wonder why it killed LaCroix and then sh- you know pushed Paul. Oh, it tried to kill Paul. Oh, did he? I thought he pushed yeah. him, and I was like, "Oh, I no!" It came up behind him and got him again. But then the kid walks out of the shed with the with the Wendigo, and Paul is like, "Uh," well, and no, he goes yeah. up against the side of the shed, and then the Wendigo comes in from the side to try and kill him. Right, 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 right. And then it gets Paul gets stuck on his antler. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty. Wendigo's gnarly. like pulling him against the wall, and it, and then Paul just like leans over. Yeah. And I think the Wendigo at this point was, it had just probably eaten a little bit of, uh, I don't know, I felt like it was weak. Because this time it just let Paul, when he when the Wendigo thinks Paul is dead, like it, I think it felt like it couldn't get to Paul suddenly. Oh, okay. Okay. It was, like a, it was like an animal, you know? Yeah. Like it's sitting there trying to get Paul through this door. <laughs> right. And then finally it pulls Paul against the wall, and which takes the antler out of Paul's arm. Right. And then Paul's just kind of slumping down, and then the the Wendigo hits the wall again like it's angry. Yeah. Almost like it can't get through. Yep, that's true. That is true. And it's an animal. It's not incredibly smart or anything. Right. So, yeah, that's... I didn't... I didn't... didn't bother me at all. Nice. All right. So... What did you think... What did you... So we talked a little bit about the battle... What were your thoughts, though, on <laughs> Aiden at the end? Oh. Right? L- loved it. 
Oh my loved gosh. it because it was so heartbreaking. That little boy yeah. was so good. Oh my god. And the sound effects they had coming out of him. Yeah. Oh. The way he's breathing too. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Oof da. And then like right right as she's about to stab him, you just see the hint of antlers starting to come out of his mouth. Yep. Yep. Oh man. Oh. That Ooh. killed me, but in a in a good way. It was it right. was really it was heartbreaking. Yep. No, I, yeah, I totally agree. And it comes down to the theme of the whole movie, which they say on the beach after at yep. the end of the movie. You know, could you kill something that you love? Right. Yeah. It's it's rough, you know. But she does it to to save to also to help Lucas. Right. Yeah. Which I do love. I love the transfer of love. Yeah, you know this love that she hasn't really been able to feel to any anybody except for maybe her brother. Right. And now she gets to take care of Lucas, and then, <laughs> and then we have the final shot of Paul. Yeah. Now he will be the just, next. <laughs> he's sad. It's sad. You it know? is because it was appreciated too. Because for a second I was like, oh wait, Paul got stabbed by an antler, but he's not going to become a Wendigo. Right. Like, what's going on here? And then he started coughing. I'm like, oh, sneaky, sneaky. Yep. And I did, I, I did like that he, he's the one that asks. Because you could almost read it two ways, I guess. Well, not really. He just <laughs> asks, though, at the end where he goes, could you kill something that you love or someone that you love? And I'm like, does he know that he's changing? I Is don't, this or yeah. not? That was kind of weird to me. Because yeah. I didn't think I didn't feel like he did know yet. Right. But maybe he did. Yeah. See, that's the thing. Yeah. And then also, and I'm the only. Yeah, oh, oh, go go for it. Yeah. Maybe I was just going to say. I'm thinking. No. Well, the same scene. <laughs> I'm just going to say, Lucas, when he kind of is over in the water, comes over to them. She calls him in, and she wipes some black smudge on his mouth, off his mouth. Excuse me. I'm like, he didn't get attacked, right? He's not going to also be like a Wendigo or something. Because there's just some black goop on his mouth. I think mouth. that was just dirt. Okay, that's what I was That's what I was hoping, too. I was like... Probably yeah, I think that was just dirt. dirt. Okay. My only thing, and this is a teeny tiny gripe... Yeah. ...was that, you know, Paul turns around coughing. Right. And he says, go on, I'll, I'll, I'll catch up. Mm-hmm. But then he's coughing so much that, in reality, I feel like Julia would have turned around and been like, are you okay? Right. That's and true. And actually, I... Don't think I would have minded having her turn around and saying, are you okay? And he looks up at her and he's got this black gunk coming out of his eyes and the movie ends. Yeah, that would have been awesome, actually. I'm all about that. Because as it is, it's kind of like a zombie movie. Right. Like, oh, he knows he's becoming something. Like, what's he going to do about it? Is he going to hide it? Interesting. Yeah. It would have been nice to see, like, her look on her face like, oh. And then the movie ends, right? <laughs> and, and that was left up. You're left utterly depressed, right? I was gonna say that would have fit perfectly with this movie, where it's just not happy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, see, and so here's the thing. Overall, I mean, it, it was fine. Like, it, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying I hated it in any way, shape, or form. Uh, but I'm also not saying I loved it. I just, it was fine, in you okay. know, in my opinion. So yeah, that's that's nutshell i'm glad though i'm so glad you loved it i think that's great and that makes me very very happy yeah despite my questions about the movie i i did i did love it 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 made me feel things um and i always appreciate a movie that gives me strong emotions one way or the other i've told i've i've said this before so no i'm with you man and the last thing i'm going to mention here is Javier Navarrete. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if I pronounced it right. He did the score. I thought the music was absolutely haunting yep. and beautiful. I agree with you on this. Absolutely. This is another one where I, I noticed the score definitely in this yeah. movie. Yep. So I agree. Absolutely. And it's it's music that's good to listen to away from the movie as well. Because nice. Because it is, it is beautiful. It's not just like like a conjuring movie where it's just you know kind of scary music noises and right. stuff right um or atmospheric music instead of you know actual music right 
You know what I'm saying. No, I know what you're saying. This would be We've had a few of those. This would be a really good album, like when fall hits, if you go for a walk, if you were playing Ooh. this, this would be perfect. Especially walking through the woods. Dude, yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Listening for Wendigos. And speaking of that, let's get to our three questions. Who would cross the bridge of death must answer me these questions three. Okay, so question number one, Andrew. Yes. Um, what was your favorite kill or death? And I think I know what it's going to be. Maybe, yeah. It was so. Mine was the bully, Clint. Um, oh, yeah. It was. Oh, I just interesting. I, that whole scene, like I said a, a little bit ago, just I thought it was shot really well. Plus, I, I just don't like bullies, and so whenever they get it in a movie, I'm like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I know. But I but I just thought that scene was done really well, and I love that it was, even though it's dark and gloomy, like we said, in Oregon mm-hmm. there, I love that it was the daylight. I thought that was. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, I appreciated that. That was mine. What was yours? Okay. Well, I think you know. it's uh, It was Principal Booth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just because, and Amy Madigan... First of all, the death was brutal. Right. I mean, first the father jumps on her back and she's and then turns her over and she's trying to push him off and he bites on her hand and there was yeah. something about Amy Madigan's scream that was so much more realistic than a normal horror movie scream. Yes. And then he bites into her neck and and takes a big chunk out of her neck. At this point, she's gone, but then he just goes up to her face and starts chewing on her face. Yeah. Come on, man. Oh, my gosh. It was so disturbing and terrifying and actually also a little bit sad. Right. Right. So, it ma- again, it made me feel things. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. So dude. that was my favorite. Um, nice. Andrew, did you think this movie was scary? So, to me, I did not, actually. Um surprisingly i guess but yeah this one to me i it, i definitely didn't lose sleep and even watching it i really wasn't scared um so no to me it was not what about you well i think you know <laughs> yeah uh i didn't lose sleep but yeah i think this movie is actually very scary nice. and i think i think that the 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 human relationship part of the movie the the dealing with the trauma right yes i think that added to the fear of the movie um and i think the movie i i felt like scott cooper did a fantastic job at at ratcheting up the tension in the movie nice um especially during the house uh you know when when as 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 i told you i jumped higher than i've jumped (laughs) in a long time when when officer lacroix gets killed and then and then just to have paul go out and do the exact same thing and then when julia goes outside seeing how brutally those two characters were treated right i was actually scared for julia when she went outside nice so i was scared for the characters and that is something i love to feel in a horror movie nice i i was scared for lucas every night that he had to spend in that house with his (laughs) brother and, and and father transforming into creatures yeah and actually i'm gonna take it a step further that there i'd be very surprised if it wasn't partly an homage to i am legend and not oh, necessarily the movie but the right. book because in the book um the main character he does he he holds himself up in the bathtub i think like in the movie Mm -hmm. um and he hears his neighbors outside constantly calling him yeah and asking him to come outside but he knows his neighbors are monsters right you know vampires trying to get him to come out and kill him and that terrified me when i read that (laughs) so i think the movie kind of instilled a little bit of that in me as well Nice. So yeah, I thought the movie was scary. I think it can be scary if you're if you're in the right mood and you watch it at the right time in the dark and everything. Fair Ooh. enough. Yeah. So finally, I uh, you know, Andrew, did you have fun with horror? Um, I would say with this one I I didn't have a great time with horror. Um 
It was, like I said, it was okay. So I don't know if I necessarily had fun. But uh, at some point, maybe I'll I'll try it again. But yeah, as of right now, no, I did not. And you? Uh, <laughs> I, you know, I can't necessarily say that I had fun right, yeah. <laughs> watching this movie. Although that's not exactly true because I would say that the death of the bully, mm -hmm. even though it's the death of a kid in a movie, right. was kind of fun. Yeah. <laughs> it was a fun scene. It was like, I was like, ooh. And the part where I jumped, that that made me smile and laugh because it, it got me so good. Nice. So it's, but the movie overall is a very somber, uh, oppressive movie. Mm -hmm. So I loved it. I wouldn't necessarily call it a fun movie. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. But I absolutely, I thought I, I did love it. I definitely would love to watch this again sometime soon. Nice. This has got to be an animal, right? No animal that I've ever seen. What's more troubling are the teeth marks on the radial bone. They seem human. Scotty, this, my friend, as you know, is one of my favorite moments. <laughs> because mm. I have no idea what we're watching next, man. I have zero clue, actually. Mm. And I'm boy, am I excited. Zero clue. Zero so. clue. <laughs> can you pick the year? Can you guess the year? Hmm. Let's see if you can guess the year. I We've been doing, I feel like, newer ones lately. So I'm going to stick with that theme and say 2021. My friend, you're correct. <gasps> yeah, right on. <laughs> And also, um, you know, sometimes I think about talking about something in the intro and I forget. So I'm going to talk about it here. Uh, okay. Dead Meat just had their very first Dead Meat Awards. Oh, right. Yeah. Which I thought was extremely well done. If, awesome. if you haven't watched it, everybody, go to YouTube. Look up the Dead Meat Awards, the prime ribs, they call it, which is <laughs> awesome. It is just such a well done 45-minute award show they got. They got their friends, celebrities, to present the awards. Nice. Just like the Oscars. Just super well done. But the thing that it also did was show a lot of movies that we had seen and not seen. Mm. And one of those movies was uh, a movie called The Night House. Oh, okay. Directed nice. by David Bruckner, who uh, also directed uh, VHS. Oh, right and, on. And uh, Southbound and The Ritual. Okay. None of those I have seen. I think. Well, maybe I've seen VHS. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, I think I saw that. It uh, and it stars Rebecca Hall. Mm-hmm. Um, I've just heard good things. I don't know barely anything about it. I think it's about a haunting. That's about all I know. Yep. I had this on my list, so that's awesome. It's got to be about a house. Yep. So that means so. yeah. Oh, the night house. So we've done the deep house. Now we'll do the night house. <laughs> right. Good. Yeah. <laughs> and I mentioned Nighthouse in our in our end of year episode. I said this was one of the movies that came out last year that I wanted to see this year. Nice, yes, dude. Ooh. So yeah, the night. Oh, and I'll tell you this: every movie that I ever look at has a five point something rating on IMDb because <laughs> the rating system on IMDb is just terrible. Absolutely, this one actually has a six point five, which I feel is pretty high. Wow, for yeah. IMDb. Yeah, I was gonna say especially for <laughs> IMDb. <laughs> um, this movie, however. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be streaming for free anywhere. Oh, it can be rented or bought on Apple TV, um, Amazon Prime Video. I don't know if you can rent it on Prime Video, but you can definitely buy it. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so it can be bought or rented. Nice. All right. But otherwise, unfortunately, it's not on Shutter or Netflix or anything like that. Okay. Good to know. Ooh, I'm excited, man. I, yeah, me too. I, I don't know anything about this, but again, yeah, it was one of those ones I'd heard the name of. People, you know, seemed to enjoy it or had thoughts about it at least, and so yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, me too. I'm I'm not I'm actually not sure when at least for me, when we're gonna get to like some older movies again. I know. Uh, but I'm kind of enjoying like Yeah, it's it's kind of interesting, isn't it? Yeah. It's an interesting thing that's and, and it might be a it might be a theme with our podcast. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is still, we're still in our first 
full year of doing it. Right. Um, and last year we had a bunch of we had a bunch of older movies that we sprinkled in with the newer ones, mm -hmm. and but then it, you come into the new year, yeah, and you want to catch up with all the movies you missed. Exactly. Yep. As well as seeing the movies that come out this year when when they hit, you know, like there's movies like X, uh huh, uh, that I know we both want to see but haven't had a chance to see in the theater, right? Plus, like movies in a theater, it's hard for us to plan that together. Like, yeah. Oh, you got to go to a theater this week, and so do I. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot easier for us to do this when a movie is a able to available to stream at home. Right. Exactly. But anyway, I digress. Yeah, I think <laughs> I think I think we might get to older movies again that we haven't seen as the year goes on. Yeah. No, nope, I agree. I know there's a couple uh that are getting some nice Blu-ray releases in the in the summer that I saw and said, "Ooh, I've never seen that and I want to." Ooh, okay. Interesting. But I'm not going to tell you what those are. Don't those do it. Ain't a secret. <laughs> Aw. And that's that. That's that's that. that's that's episode thirty seven, buddy. Just like that, man. Yeah, just like that. Man. Can't believe it. Uh, thirty seven. Thirty seven. Almost forty. Almost getting forty. Almost there. Almost there. We're getting yeah, it'll be crazy. This podcast is now older than you. <laughs> but not as old as me. <laughs> well, at heart though, it's it's a lot older than you. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, buddy i love you i love you too man this was awesome and everybody out there thank you for listening yes um, this week find us on twitter at fun w horror yes and uh and say hello we're there say hello yeah we want to see you we want to hear from you and we do we do hear from some of you and it's wonderful it we, is. we love hearing from you so all right Andrew, you have a wonderful uh, you have a wonderful week night week. Yeah, you have a you have a great week. You have a great <laughs> night house week, buddy. You have a great night house week as well. <laughs> uh, I love you, bud. I love you too. <laughs> bye bye. Three bears that lived in a dark and wet cave up above a small town. Big bear, little bear, and baby bear. Big bear used to take care of the little bears, but big bear got sick, lost his job, and his insides turned black.